so, okay, so let's lay my deck out a little bit and I'll talk about my decisions that I made when I was building this deck because I did spend more than 30 minutes on this <laughs> deck. Um, I, I was really, so I was like, okay, there, I was looking at the card pool and specifically going, man, there's a lot of stuff that just is like, you know, if one unit gets destroyed, like do proactive things. Right, so I want to start with the reactions because that's actually where I started in this deck, which is really unusual. Normally I start with ready spells and allies, but I was like, okay, I just grabbed out of my bin uh, Summon Sleeping Widows because I was like, well, this this is, you know, spend a card and two dice and get two two ones uh, just off of what's going to happen in this deck based on Brennan's ability, right? So I was like, I need, I need these cards. I want to create, I want to be able to fill his, I want to hit his battlefield limit. And I want to have units in play that I could care less about. <laughs> does that make does that make sense in a sure. way? I, I think this card's fine. So I, it was good for what you were trying to do. It was very good against me. Um, it's I have thought about playing a few times. It seems a little overcosted to me, but since everything else you're doing was so cheap, it's probably okay. I. I was also very, being very cognizant of costs in this deck when I built it. Um, and that really comes back to Kronos and the conversation that happened on our YouTube channel this week regarding my deck from last week, which was very expensive. Right. Well, last week's deck was just insanely expensive. Um, all right, so I added two Final Cries. Uh, final Cries also just another way to deal damage. Um, it was just another source of damage that allowed me to combo with Brennan and... Instead of Brennan's ability essentially saying do, um, you know, do two, I'm spending it does a, cost a power dice. It does cost a power dice, but it's one, so I felt pretty confident, you know, that I was going to be, I was going to have a power die, um, and I didn't know how much I would activate ceremonial magic in this deck, but I did. We'll get to that when we talk about the allies, um, and so I was like, okay, well, this just turns into deal four, right? Now your Glowfinch messes this up immensely for me, right? Like because I can't just push four damage to your phoenix born but going back to like what we were talking about before four damage on an average phoenix born i think the they say the average phoenix born costs 17 like if you're just picking from the pool 17 health is the average phoenix born so four is 25 percent just on an activation of a side action i thought that seemed pretty solid um so then i was like okay well i'm going to try a couple of more niche cards and that is Shatter Pulse seemed really good, but also seemed really expensive, costing three dice. So for that to be 30% of my turn on reaction, I was worried about my dice efficiency. So I played just a single copy of Shatter Pulse. Um, it just seemed like it was an opportunity to... Uh, I like that card. Yeah, it, it just gave me it gave me more tempo without actually having to deal damage to something. So it gave me an opportunity to, to react to more bigger threats that would be outside of the range of my damage dealing abilities if, if it was an issue. Uh, and then finally, I played a single copy of Crescendo, which was a one dice and discard a card. Uh, again, going back to the efficiency of the allies, which we'll get into, Crescendo, to me, like discarding an ally in this deck means absolute zero. Like I can put any ally into the bin and get it back with Ceremonial if I really need it. So to me, I just playing the ally count that I played, the discard meant zero to me, um, other than just hand presence. So... Um, yeah, so in this case, it's deal one damage to a unit you control to deal three damage to a target unit. Almost all my units are one health, so Crescendo is killing something on my board, which is triggering chance. It's, you know, it's it's being proactive. It's allowing me to trigger some in Sleeping Windows off of the Crescendo if I wanted to. Uh, and so I get to do three damage, make two units. I mean, like, I was just looking at how this whole thing could sort of compound on itself with reactions on reactions. And so that was, that was the choice. Um, so I... Started with all of those as three ofs because I was like, I don't know what, how, what the combination is going to look like until I build the rest of the deck. But I started with reactions and said, what are the reactions I want to, what do I want to do in reactionary cases? So then I moved from there to my spell board because Brennan has a small spell board. Seems to be a theme I've been playing lately. A lot of the, the Phoenix Borns I've been playing aren't big spell board Phoenix Borns. I mean, Leo's same way, three spell board. Three, yeah. And so I knew immediately I wanted Chance. Like, that was just an obvious inclusion. I was playing Ceremonial. Uh, Chant is just... <laughs> it has to be one of the best Ceremonial cards in the game, uh, in my opinion, right, right now. It's, it's really good. It's really and, good. and it's going to get better, I think, in Reborn. I think so, too. So then I was like, okay, well, I need to be able to summon... 
So I, I started with, I need to be able to summon units that I don't care about, that if they do anything, then I got value out of them. And so the Salamander Monk to me was where I went because it was a single die to cast it. It was good in your deck, for sure. I I have not been high on that card, but it was good in your deck. And and just just the ability to go, okay, I have, for a single die, I essentially get two units out of it. I mean, in capacity. I just said, that gives me more board presence, consistent board presence for all the things we just talked about on the reaction suite. So that's why I picked it. But then I got worried that I wasn't going to have a large enough threat to do something meaningful. And I know that seems kind of weird because I've got all these instances of damage, but what if that fell apart and I just ended up with a Holy Knight in front of me, right? Like, I didn't know what you were going to play this week. So I started thinking about Holy Knights and I started thinking about Frostback Bears and some of these things that I'd have to really work at to kill, right? Well, like, chant, like, trades most of your dudes with a Frostback Bear. Like, But I can't chant a Holy Knight. Right. So, so I was like, well, okay. I mean... You essentially just like hold it off forever because as soon as it attacks or does anything, then you can. Right, but I wanted to be able to trade favorably with Holy Knight if I could. That was what I was thinking when I included this card. So I included the Summon Vampire Bat Swarm because the Summon Bat Fire Summon Bat Swarm Vampire Bat Swarm has this attack to uh, health of three, but it has Relentless. When this unit would receive damage, reduce that damage to one. So I can counter a Holy Knight and only take one damage. I. I, this is like the hyphen of car I knew what it did until you played it on me. And when I, when you first told me it did, I was like, oh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. And then it didn't seem like. Because you had Nightshade it. Swallows. I think Nightshade Swallow is really good against this card. Why? Doesn't it prevent the damage? No, it, it prevents all but one. All but one. So Nightshade Swallow still deals one and the Death Strike kills it. But this doesn't even fight with Bear or uh, Holy Knight properly. But, but it, it does when you can chant after they're exhausted. Right? So. Now that they're exhausted and I can kill them, I can chant a single point of damage from one chant into a bear, one chant into... Um, like, I think this card would be really good if it wasn't fleeting. I, I, the fleeting is a downside, for sure. And um, But I also looked at it and said, it's not super expensive. It's, it's niche in the deck. Probably... In hindsight, after playing two games with this tonight, I would I would look for another more proactive third ready spell and then just have this for certain matchups. I was surprised that you weren't playing... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like... When a unit dies, you put a counter on it, and when it has three, you can sack it and like get th like hidden power three dice. Yeah, I looked at it. I did, honestly. It's um, very powerful. I, I agree, but I was also concerned, and I saw it happen in a couple of rounds, where I just, all my stuff was so cheap, I couldn't spend all my dice in a turn. And and I think New Sympathy, like from Reborn, where you can just draw and you don't have to put a card back, because this requires you to put a card yeah. back, um, New Sympathy will alleviate some of that, because I could just start refilling my hand with Sympathy dice if I did that. The times that I've played Ceremonial, it has seemed like... I always have something to do because of the ceremonial power dice. Sure. Like, it just, like, puts cards in your hand. Um, and since you can, like, kind of cheese, like, meditate into guys in your discard, and then power dice, like, I think it's probably okay, like, like to just play into that. Sure. Like, you almost decked yourself, but you killed me anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I think that that card, which I... Wish I could remember the name of off the top of my head. We'll, we'll look it up after we get done with this, yeah. um, and we'll, we'll add to that. So, all right, so that was the readies. I knew I was going to play a bunch of allies because I have Ceremonial in the deck, and why not? Um, and so my allies in Ceremonial was where do I get the most advantage from, uh, from playing the ally? That was what I was most concerned with. So the, the first starting point, of course, was Fire Archer, right? Like, it's insane. Just insane, okay. right? I'm like, okay, just playing this is insane. Anchor Knot's the same thing because right, it's like a slightly worse version. Yeah, th these are just like, these cards to me are one and the same, except that this is cheaper to play. So I actually think Anchor Knot might even slightly be better, even though it's I don't have... It's not better because you can't ping and attack. Sure. That's that's the difference. I, 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 I'm, I, would, I would relinquish that. Brennan's base ally is just, I mean, 
It's expensive at three. It's one of my most expensive cards in the deck, obviously. But he is just value all the way across the board. I don't understand the recovery two. I'm never going to set him up in a way where he's going to survive. Recovery is a weird survive. number in this game. It, they're, like, I don't have chat up anymore because my phone died. But No, I'm, uh, just, I'm watching it. So Okay. Um, yeah, this card seems really good. It, I mean, it just was. Like, it was doing all the things that I wanted a card to do. Right. It's, it's not that expensive. Like it is three dice, but it's like three easy dice. Right. And it, it um, was. It it was something where I didn't have to meditate traditionally to play it. Right. Like it was not something I had to actually work into in order to play it. Yeah, this card seems really good. Yep. I, so I don't. I can't say a bad thing about that card. So I, you know, I was like, okay, well, I'm clearly going to play the ninja, the archer, and the anchorknots. I wanted. This is only nine. I traditionally like. Um, I like to have about 11 allies in a deck. I, I love allies. Maybe 11 is too many, and pe somebody on the internet can correct me. Please feel free to if I'm uh, wrong. And so I was like, okay, well, I want to add two more. But I couldn't decide, and I decided ultimately to go to three because I also couldn't figure out how to fill out some of the rest of the deck in a way that I really liked. And so when I built the deck, I just ended up in a place where I had 28 cards. And so I was like two cards short of where I wanted to be. And so I was like, okay, well, that just makes it clear. I'm going to add an extra ally for me. And so the X, the two two cards that I was going to play for sure are Crimson Bomber. And the reason why is because this has a built-in, if I've already used Brennan and I play Crimson Bomber, I can attack with the Bomber. If it doesn't die normally, like through normal combat, then I can just use a side action to detonate I it. I don't think you can attack and detonate. Doesn't what? it lose its... Oh, yeah, you would because it's exhausted. You're right. So... You're right. I would have to make that decision, but depending on the scenario, that could be very good. This card's fine. Yeah, it's three power for two dice. Like it, it kills all the like random things. Right. Been talking so, about. so I was like, it, it, on top of having it, felt valuable from a dice cost perspective, and I said, okay, that was going to be my eleven. Right. It's weird to me that he's like the same picture as Brennan. It, it is strange that it's it's essentially Brennan, right? Is Brennan the one we found out was a girl, and we just like didn't know? Yes. I think we've been con yeah like confusing somebody told us i think her, well nick did yeah nick that's right nick told us that brennan is actually a girl that's right but nobody knew until like the designer said so that's right and so the last card i put as i decided i wanted to try to play like a bomb a quote-unquote bomb but i didn't want to i mean obviously i'm in uh ceremonial and sympathy and there's not a ton of bombs out there um and so i played the master vampire because it was a three four and i think a three four feels very good the the ability text on this card kind of means literally zero to me, but it could be good in some fringe scenarios. Maybe. <laughs> when this unit becomes blocked or guarded against by a unit, this side is from it, unit cannot counter. Is this going to get changed in... I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. But I just... This I, card's fine. It's fine. It's I like, like the 3-4. It's three dice. Like it's, it's, like... it's, it's four dice, right? No, it's three dice. Mm. Isn't this an ore? Yes, you're right. It is three dice. So they're expensive dice because it takes uh, power two classes and one one or the other power. Right. Um, but I mean, this thing, like minus its text box, just fights profitably with like every creature that, that we and that's play. that's what I that's why I played it. I I didn't even care what the box said on it. Right, and the box is not like. You would have to try really hard to find a time when the box is not a positive. Right. Like, you may never use it, and so it doesn't matter, but it's, it's like, only negative in some weird niche case where, like, I need a status token and have a card that can take one from you. Right. But. So, anyways, so I ended up at 12, not 11. When you have ceremonial dice, like, I think it's fine to just stack a bunch. Yep. Especially, like. Anchor knots and fire archers like almost count as a spell. I, like, I I feel they're more like an action spell in this deck than than they are an actual ally. Any ally value you get out of them is just incidental to the main reason you're playing them, in my right. opinion. Okay, so then uh, I wanted to try this card because I felt like it was cheaper, which meant I didn't have to meditate and. Um, it didn't ping Brennan, so I could maintain my health pool for just, like... Maybe that card's good, but it doesn't seem good to me when, essentially, like, you can spend the same amount of dice, less actions, 
and not a card in your hand. You can spend life instead of a card in your hand. I totally don't disagree. After playing it, I don't think I'd want it as a three of moving yeah. forward. I don't know what I would put in its place yet. Like, but maybe it's good if you're like trying to get back a rhino or, or an elephant rider or something big. Yeah, maybe. But like even even if because like the biggest dude in your deck Three. like threes you right, and that's something. But I mean, I would pay three life to get a ninja back or a sure. vampire back. Sure. So I, you know, it, the only again the only reason why I included it is because I thought it's it's a cheaper version of this ability without the the health drawback. So I don't have to spend a meditate right. action to get there, right? But at the end of the day, I'm I'm it, it's on the fence for me. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is that like you still want to meditate when you have this card, right? So you can put get cards to draw. So like right. the meditate is not really a downside to the... Cor correct. <laughs> it, it ultimately was a card that I got twice today. I played it once just because I wanted to actually find out if it was gonna do like if it felt good to play, and it didn't feel bad. It just didn't feel great. It was just whatever, right? right? So okay, cool. This would be like, like this is like a card that you'd have like. Like a divine class on it. I agree. Instead of a, like, like this card would make way more sense in another color. Correct. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you can access it just base mm -hmm. wise. Um, I played a single hand tricks. Uh, I'm just That's falling my, in love with this card. My favorite thing because you need side actions to do. I know. It's I know. And so it was just gave me another side action in this deck. Uh, I think that will. And when you have a bunch of cheap stuff, it gives you like a place to spend your dice at the beginning of your turn if it's in your discard pile. Like... Correct. So I was like, cool. And then the last one that I included was Dark Reaping. Another proactive, kill my dude. That card is very good. Uh, and get four dice back. And I thought, if I'm trading a Salamander Monk or I'm trading uh, an Anchronaut yeah, for good. four dice, like, I mean, it's two, right? Because I have to spend two. But ultimately... Right, it's a plus two. You know, I, I just thought that that card seemed really solid. Uh, and I would definitely probably go to a third ver third copy of it. But I, I think if I go to third copy of it, one of the things that I'm going to take away from what I saw today is I would need to figure out and find a way to get more cards back into hand. So I think Sleight of Hand, like you played Sleight of Hand, which was an Illusion card, might pair with this better. Um, but I had started with um, the New Ideas, where you can just play Side Action Draw 2, uh, I don't have the discard to trigger like just the free like I you wasn't discard it to your crescendo right right <laughs> like whatever that was I I mean like it wasn't really you know I just didn't want to build a deck around that combo but I I did feel like okay you know just being able to draw two off new ideas would be reasonable if I needed more cards and I think my takeaway from today was this was so dice efficient in terms of its costs that you could probably stand to get some card draw into this. Yeah, and maybe I, that's Augury. I was looking at Augury, which is a sympathy card that allows you to remove a status token and search up a card cost of three, two, one. Right. I mean, th this deck use could very well like take out the vampire and the crescendo and the shattering pulse and like just play hidden powers and a sleight of hand or whatever. If sure, you an illusion, right? Yeah, I don't think you want to play probably like some split of ceremonial and sympathy and illusion. No. Like, maybe you do, but the sympathy power... Like, having seven sympathy dice gives you so much reach. Well, I have seven can, ceremonial dice. Sorry, that, that's what I meant. Yeah. Having, yeah. having the seven ceremonial dice gives you so much reach when you can just, like, get fire archers back. Like, that's that's just a way you can spend the end of your turn every turn. Right. Because it's easy to kill them, too. Right. Like, you have ways in your deck to kill them, or you can just run them into guys, and you're just like, okay, I... I pass, and you're like, okay, like, attack my guy into your guy and kill it, and then, right. like, I pass again, and you're like, okay, well, side action, do this, play it again, right. like, because presumably, at least the way this game played out, uh, either, you, you would have just had time to do that in most of the situations, right. um, and I, you know... We'd have to play it against a deck that actually pressures your health total, right? To know if that hurts you or not. But like when I played ceremonial, that was all I wanted to do was just like pay a life to get a fire at your back, right? Like just every single turn. I Absolutely, like, this is the best thing, right? So that was the deck I built. I think the deck was pretty good. Of all, I of think the... it's pretty good. I 
I think you should look into the, like, when your guy dies, power up, get dice back thing. Yeah, I, I think that would be a, a reasonable solution to over the Vampire Bat Swarm. Um, right. and, and what's cool about that card specifically is you can play like a one of and put it in your row and charge it up and use it and then you still have an open slot. Like, right. Because um, you can just play a one of, put it in your opening five, lay it down, and then you're going to crack it off some turn, like turn one or turn two because you'll easily charge it. And then you can replace it with whatever you want your actual... You can turn. meditate it away and then... Well, it actually, like, when you use it, you sack it, I think. Okay. I mean, we should look this card up because we said we would do it anyways. So you, I have it over here. It's a ready, it's a summon, right? No, it's not a summon. It's, it's just a ready spell. It's just a ready spell. Okay. I don't know what it's called. Uh, it has a picture of Bram on it, I think. Okay. I'm trying to remember, I, I remember reading this card, but I don't remember what it is. There it is. Chant of the Dead. Yeah. When an ally control is destroyed, you may place one status token here. Cost one ceremonial, so it has the same cost as Chant of Revenge. During your turn, if this spell has three or more status tokens on it, you may discard the spell to select three dice in your exhausted pool and place them into your active pool. Excuse me, active pool on the, on the side of your choice. Okay. So, so like I said, you just put a one of in your opener, play it, trigger it. Right. And then you can replace it with whatever other thing you want to be doing. Or or you can go deep on him and just play several of them. Right. Um, in the pile. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this card would be reasonable over the Vampire Swarm, for sure. It's it's just, it's so powerful, it's hard to ignore, I think. I think the Augury may also be in in contention here as well, just, just because of what it can do. Because uh, it's a side action to search your draw pile for a card with a magic cost equal to the status tokens and then remove a status token. Yeah, so it, it like really slowly draws you three cards. It, right. I mean... Um, and possibly a fourth card if you have a zero. A zero which Is I that don't... how it works? Do you have to discard it when it runs out of tokens? No, this card's bound. So once it's on your board, you can't meditate it away. So it's there for good. Okay. Um, but I think you can just play other copy of Augury on top of it. Um, right. Uh, oh, I'll discard this card when it no longer has any status tokens on okay. it. So, yep. So you can't get a zero. Yeah. You have to get. A... I think though Nick was talking about in our interview that that the new version would allow you to get a zero. There was something about that. Remember I him talking? I think I. Is, but he did tell us that uh, you can use it more times, and also specifically, like we were talking about, the new Jericho pile is going to deal with status tokens. Right. Or or. Maybe not Jericho, but like just new time magic is going to add status tokens, right. so you can go kind of weird with that card. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm excited to see 1.5. So, what does it cost to activate? Does it cost a dice to activate? Uh, just a basic. Okay. Um, so it's just a, I mean, it's it's a similar sort of cost to chant, and but just on the sympathy side, and then the basic cost means you can you don't have to worry about playing sympathy dice to make it work. So, I, I was on. This card and um, I think that card's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, I just I thought the fact that I could tutor up the the Brennan ally was probably pretty good, um, or the the vampire bat, you know, the 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 uh, not the vampire bat, the the big vampire, yeah, the uh, master vampire. So, anyways, that was uh, that was the deck. So, I mean, it, obviously, it worked pretty well. I Crushed mean, me. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I will be posting this to the Ashes Live, so you can look it up and, and take a look at it. And let me know, you know, let us know in the comments uh, of our videos. Um, you know, what, what, what would you change about this deck? I'd be love, I'd love to know what that looks like.